Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Welcome to another episode of Inside the Firm. I'm here with Lance Low Commute Psycho. Wow, two two week get two weeks in a row, everybody. It was in the show notes, so I read it. Yep. <laughs> I am Al, super tired Gore. Still super tired. Had a bunch of had a Friday, last Friday meeting, had a Saturday meeting. This is like at night. Had a Tuesday meeting, had a Wednesday night meeting. Holy cow. Anyways, that's all right. I'm Taken off after Don't this. Don't worry, Kanye. Kanye is going to read for us, and he's got. Wow, some, he's got, he, it'll tie in perfectly to the your beats. Yeah. The beats, I love it. But before we get into that, let's get in. <clears throat> let's get into you upping up your skills. One way to do that is upping up how your whole firm runs. And if your whole firm is running together smoothly, you guys can run far and fast. You can do both of them at the same time. Go to buildabetterco.com, buildabetterco.com, and look at the five strategies that we use to up our profit and run an efficient firm. Accu- accurate data is crucial, especially in today's business environment. Outdated and inaccurate data leads to turnarounds, delays, and rising costs. With surprise, with supply chain and staffing issues, these costs and delays can multiply. That's why a resource like rcat.com is so important. Arcat works with manufacturers to keep their data up to date and accurate and offers it to you easily and accessible and free. Use Arcat's powerful search engine to find what you need and download it right there on their site without needing to pay anything or even register. So try arcat.com today. That's A-R-C-A-T dot com. Last and certainly not least, I want you to check out. You need to go over, head over to Duratherm. Window.com, Duratherm defines the category of all wood, completely custom hardwood windows that and doors that deliver on your architect vision. And everyone knows that that's why they refuse to rest on their laurels. And while Duratherm brand is built upon their expertise in wood windows, they are proud to announce the introduction of a clad exterior feature for our windows. Oh. Learn more at DurathermWindow.com. Check them out. Back to me, Gore. Back so, to you. So hopefully did you, I got my screen recording. You can time up that hole with that that first view. Uh-huh. Holy cow! Some Is it of good? Windows. Yeah. yeah, the windows are fantastic. Duratherm yeah. does a knockout job. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, <laughs> did you notice this is just between you know, kind of inside. When it, when someone comes to the office with a dog, the dog runs upstairs. Milo was so tired; it was like literally a delayed twenty seconds is after. That you're giggling? I saw yeah, that. yeah. Twenty seconds after the owner. That boy. That boy's tired. Yep. Lance, <coughs> if someone's going to do some Google business listings, what what would be the basics? I'll tell you the basics. Uh, so I had on the Monday morning show yesterday, which will air on 9-11-23. That's 9-11-23. I had Mr. Darren Tessatore. He told me to pronounce it like that. Awesome. And he's Italian. And uh, <coughs> he was phenomenal. I'm so glad this guy reached out, and I'm so glad I had him on because... I had I I usually have like eight pre uh, listed out and written down and researched questions for folks, and we make it an organic conversation. But this one was a hundred percent organic because w- as soon as I understood that he, Darren starts with his what he does for small businesses is consults them first with Google business listings, and uh, we just. You know how if you're a longtime listener, you know how important that is to your business. It is the new yellow pages. They don't even send out yellow pages anymore. I am I am previewing his episode today because everybody who listens to this show absolutely needs to go listen to it. He's going to reinforce what we've been saying, but also the insight he was he gave us. Now I have homework for myself, some homework for Al, and some homework for Alex Gresh, who is eventually going to run the Denver firm. Uh, the Denver sat the office we have down here, Branch, and because because I I learned some very very valuable things, and I'll just give you a little teaser about them. So let's say you listen to this show and you want to, and you're thinking about starting a business. One of the things you want to do right after you sort of register, whether you're you know with the state, secretary of state and whatever entity you decide after you've consulted with the right people, is 
you need to claim your Google business listing first. So let's say, because let's say you started your LLC, <clears throat> or an LLC or an S Corp or whatever, and you, you actually go get a, and you, you, you register it to a physical address. So like you already have a condo rented or brick and mortar and everything. Yep. Google, Google somehow <laughs> through its AI and all of this, it will, it will, if you don't do it, if you, let's say you waited six months to claim your Google business listing, yep. they, they're probably going to start it up for you, believe it or not. And then you have to go in and claim it. Okay. So, gotcha. so try to be ahead of the curve for that. Yep. Um, and then the second, so let's say, let's say you got the claim. Perfect. Now you're, you're in it. Hey Lance, how do I, what do I do? What do I do to get it started? First thing you need to do is research your competitors. So it's just like if you started, if you started a new product, right. And you were going to sell, I was going to sell uh, uh, new Hawaiian. Hawaiian shirts. Exactly. Hawaiian shirts. And they're going to have Al's face on it. Oh, they would go. <laughs> they would, they would go. Yeah. Once you do that, Right then, uh, w once you establish like what what am I selling here? What product am I selling? What service am I selling? Go look up your competitors, especially locally in the town you're operating in, in the county, in the state, and go look at their Google business listing and see what keywords they're using that are right, what keywords that are using that are wrong. And then he said, uh, Darren was telling me, feel free to j now use ChatGPT for this to beat your competitors. Because mm. you have 700, you have an opportunity in your Google business listing for a 750 word description. And that's where your keywords come into play, right? You're gonna try to, you, so you need to get the prompts right with, with ChatGPT. It might take a bunch of iterations, you know, but for example is, uh, ChatGPT, I am trying to, I, I just started an, an architectural services business where we provide services for custom single family residential, multifamily and small commercial buildings. My competitors are X, Y, and Z. Please draft a 750 word description with as many keywords as possible. Yep. Blah, 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 blah. And get that written and nice and try to use almost every word because every single word that you use and the more keywords you put in for people that are searching for your, your service that, or product that you're offering, that's where the indexing indexing starts and you want to try to get into what they call the three pack. So like when you, if you Googled, if I Googled, I'll do it right now. Great. Al's going to Google, uh, uh, do a car repair shop Longmont. And what'll come up is the first two ads are the sponsored ads. If you're spot, if you're, if you're advertising through Google, yep. BG automotive and then pride auto care. Now there should be three underneath that. Then there's also sponsored yeah, CBA, Christian Brothers. Yep. And then Steve's. Yep. And then, so then you want to be try to get into that three pack locally. That that's your goal with that. Second thing is this was critical. Was he's like, make sure you're posting photos. He goes, the big mistake that everybody makes is mm. they are not posting photos. If you have a brick and mortar of your brick and mortar, take pictures of your employees, take pictures of your storefront, and and tag them with a location because Google, that's what Google wants. After, after you kind of, after you get that established, the next one is <clears throat> we've said this over and over again. And, and there are people I've had on this show, other architects. I'm like, why are you, please, please don't hire employees because I, you're going to get them laid off. If you don't, if you're not listening, if you're not just believing in what we're saying here, and that is, don't be bashful about asking for these reviews. I've had people say recently, it's it's awkward or something like that. I'm like, oh my God, the, the, you, you, the whole point, like you are living in 1970 or something like that. It's not awkward. Yeah. This is part of the drill. He Darren reinforced how we do it. You know, he gave on the show, you'll listen to the episode and you'll go, he's talking about a product, right? So like, uh, oh, how, here's a good example. So let's say we go to a restaurant now. And the server comes to us and they go, they take our order and they go, will you please leave us a five-star review? Is that the right time to ask that? No, right? So let's say they take your order. They don't ask you that. You have an excellent meal. Yep. You're at a high point. Hey, guys. The, I'm, play, I'm like the server, Cindy yeah. or whatever. Hey, guys. Uh, we have a competition right now between all of the servers about who can get as many five-star reviews. It would really help me out. 
if you guys could give me some five star reviews, here's a QR code. Show them your phone. Take the QR code. Boom. You nailed it. You nailed it. Like that's the perfect timing. Yeah. So translate that to like architecture, construction, service based business. What is the big prize? What is the deliverable that you gave them that allowed them to be at their high point? Like what is the stake? Right? Like what is the perfectly done stake? And if you're an architect, we've said this before, is hit them, ask them for their help with a five-star review once they receive their building permit or once they receive their certificate of occupancy, like that high point of we've made it to the finish line, we are happy with where we're at, and you'll get those reviews. Whenever they're excited. Like, here's one, too. They might be excited that they get the final drawings. Yes. Here are the final drawings, blah, blah, blah. That's a good point. That, that I've been trying to and Darren will go in, as a default. Yes, Darren goes into it in better detail than me because this is what he does day in and day out. But like the language that you should be using when you ask for him, very critical. Then, then I love this part. I love the whole thing, but I really love this part. He was like, you need to respond to every single review. And he goes, Lance, the secret about even the bad ones because he goes, the bad ones are actually a gift because you're, you could do two things with them. First of all, with all of them, if you respond to them, you can then add more keywords into every single response. Oh. And yeah, and Google picks up on those keywords and it's just going to make your ranking higher. So with the bad ones, he was like, you could kill two birds with one stone. Number one, the bad ones are kind of a gift, because he says, because like they will, it will show two sides of the story. You will explain, you, will, you need to, you need to carefully craft your explanation of, first of all, take ownership. Take yeah. ownership of the problem. 100%. But then you can give your explanation and then sort of end it with a, you know, thanks again, we'll keep this in mind or whatever, right? Plenty of good examples you can find online. But the best part about it was is then like, oh, then you can use that for more keywords. Like they gave you an in for even more keywords yep. on your Google business listing. And... You can find examples online. I was I've seen multiple ones from like the charter school to just like, be, you know, bear, uh, Jerry's repair service. Um, that should alleviate some fears because some people don't want it to kind of put that out there because yeah. they might get some bad ones. Just know, hey, you can Google really good responses and you'll see a bunch of examples of it. Um, and every time, like let's just say it's the charter school, you know, hey, sorry you're, sorry you're child had you know issues at our school yep. we're we're always here to help you know children reach their uh you know full potential please so, feel free to reach out blah 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 <laughs> the firestone charter academy has students you know i'm doing keywords first in mind sorry sorry we oh, we forgot about that one critical item when we uh, finish your your drawings we have now since implemented a new policy at our firm to alleviate this for the future we appreciate we appreciate your insight into that as it ha- as it's helped us improve so that we can provide even better service to the next customer like architectural th- services yes <laughs> it, architectural services to the next to the next custom architectural so- like you get where we're going with this right yeah right that's why the negative is so important in life yeah. um okay so then, then I would love this reassurance. And, and this actually proved to me that it worked. I, I'm pretty sure I got it done. You can get bad reviews removed. You just got to keep trying. So Darren will go into more detail. But basically, when you, when, when, if you get a bad review, you can, you can get it removed, especially if, it has, especially if it's like tangential and it doesn't make any sense, right? So like, let's say you're providing car services, but they didn't like your coffee in the, in the lobby, and that's their complaint. It's like sure. there's a chance you can get it reviewed, removed by Google. You got, but but you're you're fighting through Google's AI, so you have to keep at it and hammering at it until you finally get to a person. Can you send an, an, your AI against their AI? That would not be awesome. <laughs> They're just like a Google bad review tool and a- it's AI. Yeah. Yeah. Darren, what Darren says is that is he goes, you know, once you and I gave him examples of like how we got it removed um, in that episode. And he said, like, just so you know, though, they won't tell you when it's removed. Like it's like I remember that one morning I text you and I was like, we're back up to five stars. Like what? Yeah. Yeah. So it just you just got to keep hammering at it. Yeah. 
I do think that that one was just for me. But it doesn't matter. It, it's something to look into and know that it's in your arsenal. Who knows? Uh, okay. And then last, I just want to make just want to make sure everybody's on the Ravers Radar. We are recording this on August 25th. That episode with Darren Testatory, don't miss it. 9-11, 2023. Really, really good. Yep. Awesome. Our, yeah. L- let's break it up. I'll, I'll go. Good. I'll go with mine. Uh, this is AIA. Uh, new, yep, report highlights positive and negatives uh, of compensation and benefit trends in architecture. Boop. There, there, there. Just so Lance can see. Now we're back on the YouTube. Okay. Yep. Hey, hey here we go. So, what are you doing? Uh, they did a comprehensive report. You can download it. I love when they do data and reports. I think that that's one of the most helpful things that they do. Um, Pay practice is one of the key areas of the report. And findings show that compensation gains did not keep pace with the rising cost of living over the last two years. Compensation increased approximately 4% over this period, while inflation increased 5% in 2021 and 8% in 2022. Um, obviously the metropolitan areas have the highest starting compensation also have the highest cost of living. Uh, for example, a recent college graduate non-licensed in New York city will devote 55% of their salary to rent while a recent graduate in Des Moines, Iowa will devote about 24% of their salary to rent. Des Moines is an underrated city, it just is. like Kearney, Nebraska, um, just giving a shout out to those cities. Uh, on average, rents account for just under 35% of median starting compensation. Compensation. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go to, this is what I wanted. Okay. <clears throat> a little more. Actually, this is what. Small firms were more likely than larger firms to report an offering a greater premium for architectural employees with a professional degree with 21% indicating that they offer generally a 10 to 14% uh, more for a professional degree. In contrast, 14% of mid-sized and 11% of large firm reported the same. Um, this is, this is, I want to know your take on this. I, I don't th- I think the bigger the firm, the more larger your compensation should be yeah or, or like so a, the benefits are they saying offered a greater premium like this report okay this report finds the salary growth is more substantial to smaller firms than larger firms smaller firms small firms are more likely than larger firms to report offering a greater premium for architecture employees with a professional degree with 21 percent indicating that they generally offer 10 to 15 percent more in contrast 14 percent of midsize and 11 percent yeah, some reason they're saying, huh, that's a, a goal cap set. It's counterintuitive to what my uh, premise yep. going into this would have been. Yep. I agree. We have a small firm. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, so I mean, we can look at the report um, in more detail, and maybe maybe we'll bring it back up. Um, but that I think if it surprised us, it might surprise people looking for jobs and stuff like that. That smaller firms, you might get uh, the most. A little more than uh, one-third – 34% of small firms report offering a premium over 10% upon licensure, higher than the 24% of mid-sized firm and 10% of large firms of the same. And this is what I maybe thought that they were talking about was small firms were more nimble and were offering bigger pay increases mm-hmm. during this time, which then makes sense to me because a large firm, if a large firm is trying to get 10% to everyone, that is so much money. So much money. If a small firm is trying to give a 10%, uh, you know, uh, incentive slash pay increase to deal with inflation, which is what F9 did to absolutely everyone. I mean, it's not like it's cheap, but it's more manageable than if you had 500 people. Um, so that's it. Check it out. Um, it, it, I feel like these reports are, are always good from the AIA. Uh, and, uh, as much as we crap on you. And we hey. do. And we do. Hey. Please run your marketing by us. And we're not all even you, the best. You, look. We're not even the best. All you got. I know. Not even close. All you got to do, AIA, I'm telling you. Like, the, like, here's what you're doing good. When we read, when we read about 
when we read off of your website and we cite your reports, we are acknowledging you're doing good work. Good job. Pat, pat, pat. I'm patting you on the back here. Your, it's your marketing that's awful. Like, we need you to actually do your job, which I think part of your job should be, inform the public what architects do. Because guess what? I got another call this week. Hey, I was recommended to you by X, Y, and Z. And uh, they described the problem, and I go, you need a structural engineer. Like, this is a structural engineering problem. But here's the structural engineer. I'm, I'm happy to do it, but like it would be nice if they just we if the public knew. Here's why you need an architect. Here's what an architect does. And and if if, if I I agree, if you're not vibing with that, your marketing needs to be clear and actionable. They I, I not vague about like what what was the what was the infrastructure one? God, that one still sticks oh, with me. Yeah, um, we're gonna. Need rebuild our infrastructure in the 21st century. Call an architect. Like, no, you call a civil engineer. What do, what are you talking? What are you like talking civil- about? Yeah, I know. What are you <laughs> talking about? And and don't pretend like yeah, but architects can oversee and coordinate everything. Stop, stop. You should know that that's not true. Um. Anyways, <laughs> there's just just so many ways to have a hook, which is homeowner business owner, developer, whatever one you want to pick. Do you need some sort of building or some service that architects actually do? (laughs) You can find them on AIA.com slash find an architect. Ooh, that was pretty good, actually. AIA.com forward slash find an architect. Whatever. Yeah. Get it done. Yep. And then in in the middle, that was a three part. Like you should do like a problem slash solution. You should do some contrast, blah, blah, blah. Low level marketing, like this is like low level marketing. Weren't they basics. so? Weren't they so excited? Weren't they so proud of themselves? Didn't they like do like a? They were doing like national ads or something like like in the Super Bowl. Like in the Super Bowl, there was like an ad like a couple years ago or something yeah. about this. Yeah, yeah, and they were so excited about oh, it. Oh, it, it reinforced uh, a negative stereotype that architects had their heads in the cloud. Oh God, exactly. so, something, something like that. And something. It was just yeah. You guys, come on. Yeah, come on. Literally, here's 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 what you guys could do. If you guys, if you guys, AIA marketing team, I know you're listening. What's his name? Kermit. Kermit. Yeah, I know you're listening. Kermit is literally my best friend that doesn't know that he's my best friend. He's a frog. I love it. Just kidding. Well, love he, that name. He's Teddy's son. <laughs> yeah. That's how. That's I. Okay. He's Teddy's son. Uh, <laughs> yeah. If here's how you solve the problem with the marketing. Imagine as if. You're trying to convince a plumber that they are need to hire an architect for their addition. Crack that egg. You nailed it. You yep. nailed it. Speak to that. Speak to that segment of society. Yep. And the rest will fall in place. So, so uh, just because we're on a tangent and we allow ourselves to go on a tangent, you know the the beat. Do 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 do. There's actually a couple songs that do yeah, yeah. something like that, right? Yeah. So the the do the fast. I mean, you're speaking over this. You're showing pictures of great architecture of buildings oh, of stuff. Oh, that, I'm that, following yep, you yep, now. Yep. Yep. Here we go. Here we and go. And then the do do where it goes up. It's literally the QR code to AIA slash find an architect, and like that's your Super Bowl commercial. It's like literally what I said. The three parts with pictures, and then the pause is this QR code because people if they don't do it right away they can pause the show and like go back oh shit like i actually frank does need an architect like i'll i'll get this and send it to frank or or we actually need someone you know mm-hmm. you show remodels you show all that stuff that's it i love it hire al gore uh all right if you do that i will only take a thousand dollars for that okay all right, uh, some local news, but it applies to everybody because here we are in the housing crisis again. From Denver7.com this week, Denver mayor wants to spend $7 million on tiny homes for the homeless. City Council to consider mayor's request to purchase 200 tiny homes from Pallet. Denver mayor Mike Johnston has provided a few details about how much... Ha <laughs> ha, classic. Let me reread that. Uh, sorry. Denver Ma- mayor Mike Johnston has provided few details... <laughs> About how much his plan to cows 1,000 people by the end of the year will cost. But that's beginning to change. Oh, okay. The mayor's office is asking city council to approve a $7 million contract with Pallet, a social purpose company, for 200 tiny homes. Please, please tell me you're doing the math. 
that how much it costs per home. The tiny homes the mayor's office wants to purchase are 70 and 120 square feet in size, which is cool because then you are underneath the permitting uh, deal with that. So the city doesn't want to deal with itself? Nice. The 70 square foot units can fit up to two people. The 120 square foot units can fit up to four people. What's the math? 35,000 per unit. Not the worst. No, Not, amazing. Uh, yeah. The $7 million figure includes the cost of air conditioners and heaters for each unit, along with twin mattresses, bed frames, and folding desks. Very interesting. Look, it even has a uh, a list of items here. Wait, 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 stop. Uh, Shelter square foot. Okay, two people more. Total. What are you trying to? Oh, oh, oh they're adding all of it up. Got yeah. it. Got and it. The, apparently, so like there's a chart up here. If you're watching on YouTube, it's got uh, a list of items. Den Denver Mayor Mike Johnson wants to purchase from Pallet. And uh, the 70 square foot units are 13,900. Uh, the 120 square foot units are about 19,000. Uh, four se not bad. And then you add in uh, all the rest AC, of the stuff. The electrical, twin bed frames. Mm -hmm. Yeah, folding desk. Yeah. Okay, cool. And you get that, and there's some bigger shelters and stuff like that. Uh, if Denver City Council approves the mayor's request, the tiny homes will be located initially in three micro communities with, with plans to expand. Quote, we've noted that we're looking to create seven to ten micro communities, said Cole Chandler, the mayor's senior advisor on the homelessness. Chandler says they're also looking for organizations to operate the micro communities and, and to provide wraparound services to help residents get back on their feet. Quote, basically, we're asking organizations to bid and let us know what it takes to serve these communities the best way possible. End quote. Um, they kind of look like refrigerator boxes with the slope on top. Yep. But um, for that price point, I don't know what else. You know, I, I had to say that because I was trained as an architect and visuals. Well, yeah, you know, trim, I mean, honestly, trim around there. it's they look like a refrigerator with windows. They look like a refrigerator with windows. They look like a fish house. If you're from the great, uh, great north like Al and I are. And if you really zoom out, it kind of looks like a concentration camp. Sorry. Wow. Wow. Rough. Rough. Um, <laughs> we're just saying our reactions. Yeah. I'm not saying that hey, they shouldn't do it, exactly. that, that this isn't better than the streets or a tent or anything like and that. And maybe so. they'll paint them. Like, what if they paint them and they're all different colors? Cool. Then it'll look like Put Miami. some plants in there. Put some plants. Just put some plants. Yeah. There you go. Deindustrialize it. That's the challenge here, it looks like. So good luck. We'll keep you guys updated on that. I'm interested. The tiny house, as you guys know, we are tiny house aficionados. And we do super high-end ones and not affordable ones. Um, that's just our shtick. But and I think our audience knows where the uh, – if you just watch ATV – HGTV and you saw the amazing tiny homes that are made of wood and stuff and they're like, yeah, this only cost me 34000 Why can't they do that? It did not cost them 34000 It cost $100,000 for one of those yeah. homes. Like, So that's why. Costs are different. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. We have Kanye. Kanye is coming. Yay. Live performance for about, what, 15 seconds? Probably 15, 20 seconds. Just for us. Let's, that's let's, all we could afford. Let's do it <laughs> on this episode of Inside the Firm. Here we go. I refuse to follow those rules that society has set up in the way that they control people with low self-esteem, with improper information, with branding, with marketing. I refuse to follow those rules. It's about truth. It's about information. It's about awesomeness. And the only luxury is time. The time you spend with your family. That's the only luxury. I agree. Al's, Al, as you can see, see what I mean? Al's, uh, Al's oh. taking a personal day as soon as we're done recording here. Spend that time. Yep. Lance is headed to the mountains, spending that time. Spending that time. Yep. Well, with that, I'll go get the team for ARE Jeopardy. Life is short, but you don't have to be. Introducing Konzuri, the shoe brand that not only elevates your style, but also boosts your height. Yes, you heard that right. Konzuri offers height-boosting shoes made for men to build up the confidence they need for every situation. With Konzuri, you no longer have to settle for your natural height. Their shoes come in a variety of insoles ranging from 1.2 inches to an impressive 2.7 inches of extra boost. Plus, their heights range from 2.4 inches to 2.8 inches, giving you the perfect opportunity to look and feel good. Imagine walking into a room with an added boost, commanding attention, and exuding confidence. 
Kanzuri's height-boosting shoes will allow you to stand tall and proud, enhancing your presence in any social or professional setting. As a special offer exclusively for our listeners, Kanzuri is giving you a fantastic deal. Just use promo code LANCE48066. That's LANCE48066 at checkout to enjoy a generous 15% discount on your order today. That's right. Get the height-boosting shoes you've been dreaming of at an unbeatable price. Uh, question number one, existing building stair rise, uh, shall not, yeah, rise shall not be over how many inches and run shall not be less than how many inches. So you might want to write down the answers. So it's rise shall not be over how many inches and it's run must not be shorter than this amount. Okay. Is it a eight and then nine B seven, 10, C, seven, 11, D, nine, eight. Existing stair. <laughs> this is commercial. Hint commercial. Okay. It is a, so, uh, it can be up to eight inches tall and its rise must not be shorter than nine inches instead of, you know, seven, 11, right? Okay. Existing number qu question. Number two, existing building stair height, head height clearance shall be a six foot eight B seven foot C six foot six D six foot C six, six C six, six. A six foot eight. <laughs> uh, is there? Is it? No matter what. Yeah. So it's seven feet, no matter what, right? I feel it's like. like seven or seven foot something. Yeah, it might be seven six exactly. And then if you and then like let's say it's not a non egress, it's just for access. You can you can exception. Yeah. I'm not designing many stairs just for fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Like, it, wha, we, hey, if somebody's listening and they want to hire us, they have a big enough budget. Uh, like, oh, we're just doing it for it. fun. Yeah. Like, if we can do extra stairs, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Number three, according to the International Building Code, what is the minimum width required for a clear aisle in a retail store? Is it A, 30 inches, B, 36 inches, C, 42 inches, or D, 48 inches? This is just classic ARE. The correct answer is B, 36 inches. Just trying to throw you off about the retail store. How many you got, Gresh? Two? One? Two to one. Two to one. Here we go. Number four. In seismic design, what does the term occupancy category, or OC, determine? Is it A, the maximum allowable occupancy in a load in a building? B, the level of occupancy hazards in a building? C, the type of structural system used in a building, or D, the level of seismic forces a building must be designed to resist. The correct answer is D, the level of seismic forces a building must be designed to resist. And I check these today. Just so you guys know. Nice. What do we got? Gresh wins. All right, where are we going? Probably runs on. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. It's up to uh, you two and Jason. But you're ultimately in charge since you won. Yeah. So I will actually be joining today. Oh. Which is cool. I still say force your opinion on everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Take advantage of that win. There you go. All <laughs> right. If you're watching on YouTube, leave us the leave us a positive comment. Subscribe. If you're listening uh, in iTunes, five-star reviews. Don't forget to send us gifts. Email us at lmc at f9productions.com or akg at f9productions.com. We'll see you next week.